Great! Dean Hinckley was so excited that he made himself cough. Dr. Pink and Dr. Dreyer looked at each other and saw the uneasiness in each other's eyes. They nodded and turned to Dean Hinckley. They looked serious and said, Dean, we need to convene a board meeting right away to discuss this decision. Hinckley's face changed significantly. The highest decision-making level of the Arklands Hospital was the hospital board, composed of five members. Those five people were Dean Hinckley, Dr. Pink, Dr. Dreyer, Dr. Kilmead, and one other honorary vice president. In these board meetings, they were the ones who made all of the major decisions for the hospital. They also used the board meetings to accept and remove members from the board. Now, in front of everyone, Dr. Pink and Dr. Dreyer were openly opposing Dean Hinckley's decision. By asking to convene a board meeting, it was clear that they intended to oppose the decision. They were usually very different to Dean Hinckley. In fact, it was one of the first times they had ever pushed back against one of the dean's decisions at all. But ever since the dean had left to take care of his health issues, the two vice presidents had gained more and more of a sense of ownership over the hospital. Dean Hinckley glared at them both, fire in his eyes. I don't believe there's anything to discuss, gentlemen. But we feel it's necessary. Dean, let's make a decision. It happens that all four of us are here today. I'm going to get Dr. Kilmead and call the last board member. Dr. Pink and Dr. Dreyer were rather flippant to the dean's insistence. They turned to leave without waiting for him to object anymore. You, you... Dean Hinckley didn't realize how bold the two men had gotten in his absence. He got so worked up that he triggered another coughing fit. His face was red and it seemed like he would cough out his entire lung. Some of the doctors around him began to panic. Aiden subtly stuck his hand behind the dean's back. Using energy manipulation, he helped Hinckley's breath to calm down. He wasn't curing him at all, but with energy manipulation, he could help calm the symptoms for the time being. He knew with sadness that the Dean's lungs were past help from even the angels. Dean Hinckley looked at Aiden gratefully. I apologize. I don't know what got into those two. Rest assured that at the board meeting, you will be given exactly what you are due. He knew that it wasn't easy to win over Aiden, and he was frustrated that his two power-hungry vice presidents were trying to prevent him from doing so. Although he promised Aiden would get his due, he didn't fully believe it. He had wanted to take advantage of the last part of his life to tie such a talent to his hospital. He felt that having someone so skilled set up to take over at the hospital would allow him to leave the world with ease, but he knew that the meeting would be filled with blowback to the decision. Obviously, Dr. Pink and Dr. Dreyer were vehemently opposed. Kilmead, his apprentice, was simply not interested either way. The last board member was hardly ever at the hospital and was similarly indifferent. He didn't expect that she would be any help either. He doubted that even his influence would be enough to convince the board of anything. But in any case, he had to try. Aiden casually shrugged in response to Hinckley's apology. Dr. Pink and Dr. Dreyer were insane, but Dr. Hinckley couldn't know that they were low on the level of crazy that Aiden had experienced. Aiden didn't mind letting them know what crazy really looked like. Dr. Pink and Dr. Dreyer don't know that they were heading toward Aiden's special brand of revenge. While preparing for the board meeting, they met Kilmead in his office. They made a promise to Kilmead that as long as he supported their proposal and opposed Aiden becoming vice president, they would shower him in various favors. But Kilmead just yawned a few times and said lazily, I really don't care about your crusade, actually. I expect I'll abstain from the vote. This wasn't their desired reaction, but an abstention worked in the two's favors just as well as anything else. So they called on the final member of the committee. Yes. You don't have to do anything else, just vote against the measure at the meeting later, Dr. Pink reassured into the phone. His hand shook slightly as he spoke, afraid of the woman on the other end. And if you feel that it's too troublesome, you could also abstain, Dr. Dreyer added. The two vice presidents had never spoken to anyone with such humility and grace as they did to their two colleagues now. They hung up the phone call, entirely satisfied. Aiden Dale, you'll never be vice president. The two looked at one another proudly, their hearts full of malice. The board meeting was held in the conference room on the top floor of the hospital. This meeting aroused the attention of doctors throughout the building. It was a silent battle ongoing, a war of opinion as to whether Aiden should or shouldn't be a vice president, whether Dr. Pink and Dr. Dreyer were right or wrong. When the wind of this discussion spread to Nurse Nancy's ears, she was stunned. How could a person who had set foot in the building for the first time yesterday become the vice president of the hospital? Surprisingly, she found that she had had her hands clasped, secretly praying for Aiden to be voted as vice president smoothly. 
At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the meeting had officially begun. In the conference room, Dean Hinckley, Kilmeade, Pink, and Dreyer sat around a conference table. Aiden had also been invited to the meeting, but he was not allowed to speak or vote. Dean Hinckley's painful cough interrupted the intense silence from time to time. The rough, scratchy sound made Aiden worry for the old man. In order to let the dean go back and get some rest earlier, let's streamline the meeting process, Dr. Dreyer said with disdain, glaring at the dean coldly. Since our last board member hasn't arrived, we won't wait any longer. We will count her vote as an abstention, Dr. Pink said. Now, please raise your hand if you oppose Aiden Dale becoming an honorary vice president of the hospital. He and Dr. Dreyer firmly raised their hands. Naturally, Dean Hinckley stood his ground and did not oppose. However, the two still felt the vote was as good as one, knowing that Kilmeade planned to abstain. When the opposing vote came, it could be a two-to-one result. Their side would emerge victorious. Now please, raise your hand if you are in favor of Aiden Dale becoming an honorary vice president. Dr. Pink looked confident. Until not one, but two hands across the table were raised. <laughs> 